First standard open of season three. He's got Fanatic of Mogus. He's got a couple more burn spells, two Shock, two Magma Jets. He has one Searing Blood, four Lightning Strikes. He has Boros Reckoners as well. So a different take, but one that he is very familiar with. Yeah, this is, uh, you know, he does play sort of the more devotion curve. There's no, there's no Perforos in this list, but it is going all the way up to Fnatic and Bogus and plays with a lot of the double and triple mana spells along the way. Ash Zealot is in this list for a similar reason. Now this green and black uh, constellation deck, we haven't seen this for a little while. Again, Brian Bronduin tried this a little a little while ago. Um, Kasa Giomi doing the same thing here again. He's got Brain Maggots. He's got Underworld Coinsmith, a card that Brian didn't have. You've got Corsair of Crew, Fixed Island Blossoms, the mighty Doomwake Giant. His deck has a higher curve, so he needs to get going very quickly. I think it's going to be very important for him to, try, to draw, excuse me, Sylvan Carry added or Corsair of Crufix every game. Yeah, uh, Sylvan Carried it is the most important card in this matchup, I think, by by a bit. Though the way that Festus' list is set up, he's also pretty soft to Corsair. I mean, we're looking at Firefist Striker. He has no mortars in his list. He has no Stoke the Flames. It's a problematic card. The Underworld Coinsmith has shown up to the party, and we haven't seen this card for some time. You see Festus wants to take a look. We're going to do the exact same thing here with the Black-White Constellation card. Now, it does have a little bit of lifelink action with it. Of course, Constellation, whenever this thing or another enchantment comes into play under your control, you gain a life, and then you pay a white and a black, and you pay a life, and each opponent loses a life. So most importantly is that you know, this is obviously a 2-2 that can block early, but... I mean, every, every enchantment that you play, you get to gain some life. The solid body, there's a lot of little stuff, and then once you have your larger Constellation cards in play, it's a cheap way to trigger those as well. So it's a workmanlike card for this sort of strategy. It also has two toughness. Uh. <laughs> so there's a Searing Blood. That's going to get that out of the way. And now here's an attack here for four. So things are going very well for Festus Resendez. And he's even got a one drop to follow up with here in Rakdos Cackler. This game might be over before it even starts. So I'm not sure if I would have used the Searing Blood that turn. I think I would have preferred to deploy Firefist Striker. You can attack with only Ash Zealot if you don't want Gabriel to trade there. But getting the Firefist Striker in play is pretty important because if something like Corsair of Krufix enters play this turn, there's not really a backup plan for attacking. Well, there's another Underworld Coinsmith. So that's going to come in. Kosa is going to gain a little bit of life here before passing the turn back over to Resendez. Resendez will untap those creatures and those lands. He will draw cards, a copy of Shock. That is timely. Get that thing out of the way. Shock is also quite good against <laughs> Underworld Coinsmith as well. And now here's an Asselt. Now we're getting into the red zone, and Kostiomi says, no, thank you. We are all done here. So Festus Resendez, our first standard open champion here of Season 3, is back at it with Mono Red Aggro. He is up a game over Gabriel Kostiomi. Mono Red Aggro defeating Black Green Constellation in Game 1. I've got the Constellation decklist in front of me. And so I'm looking at two copies of Bloodbear and Rescopa, two Abrupt Decays, two Golgari Charms, four Thoughtseize, three Nylea's Disciple, and two Nixfleece Ram. Things certainly get better. That's a lot of high-quality life gain creatures to bring in. Nixfleece Ram and Nylea's Disciple are huge upgrades. Golgari Charms, not that good against Festus's build. Mono Red, he goes a little bit higher up the curve. He doesn't have that many one toughness creatures. Still probably worth bringing in on the balance. The Abrupt Decays, uh, I'm not even sure if Blood Baron is... Blood Baron may not be good enough to bring in because he has so many excellent cards to sideboard in this matchup. He's, he's bringing a lot to the table post board. On the other side of things, you've got uh, you've got his red deck. He's already up a game. It was pretty decisive game one. What do we like over there? Four Skull Crack, two Harnessed by Force, three Busy and Mortars, a Toil Trouble, two Electricery, and three Searing Blood. The Searing Bloods, I think, are pretty solid in this matchup. You've seen Underworld, Coinsmith. You can reasonably expect that Eidolon Blossoms in this deck as well. And Gabriel's also playing Brain Maggot. So there's a fair number of targets. Uh, the Mortars, I'm not sure if you want to bring in Mortars in this matchup. It feels a little bit narrow. The problem is that you don't exactly know what Gabriel's bringing to the table. You can expect Eidolon of Blossoms and Doomblade Giant and all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. But does he have Archangel of Thune? Definitely a possibility. What kind of Planeswalkers are you playing against? So, boarding accurately is pretty hard in this matchup. I think that if I was in Gabriel's, uh, Festus' spot rather, I'd probably just bring in the three copies of Searing Blood and the two copies of Harness by Force, because you can expect Doomwave Giant, and just let it rip. I wouldn't do much sideboarding beyond that. Well, players are going to finish shuffling up here. We'll have game number three underway in just a moment. We're going to talk about our, uh, our, our, our bushy friend with the big cheeks, mm -hmm. our good buddy Acorn Mystic. Oh, come on. Look at you. Yep. Look at you. Available, Adorable. Available June 13th. So it's been available for some time now, but of course available at all of our Legacy Opens. You can, of course, go to Star City Games and buy all of this stuff from the brand new Creature Collection series. And we do have, again, you've got the playmat, you've got the dice bag, the deck box, the sleeves, and of course any Legacy Open that you do enter, you do get two of the tokens. Adorable. 
I want to know what we're going to have next year. Do I know? I don't know. I actually have no idea what we're going to get next year. But as we have talked about many times, it might be time to start commissioning hippos. No, I know. Or the Dangerous Animal Series. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Dangerous But Doe-Eyed Animal Series would yeah. be awesome. This, sharks. Yeah, hippos. Hippos, hippos and sharks. Snakes, ra like rattlesnakes, poisonous snakes. Can we get like an anaconda, like the movie? Yeah, anaconda. Yeah, I think just what, what, whatever is the most dangerous snake. Perhaps a black widow spider. Black widow, that's a very good choice. Because there are a lot of spider tokens out there, so we probably need some of those. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of other dangerous animals. Why? I don't know why I can't think. Are whales dangerous? Uh, I mean, they're, they're probably not great to hang out with, I would imagine. They are rather big. Oh, I guess they are called killer whales that's, for a reason. That does... That does illuminate. Our director is fairly intelligent, so that's good. <laughs> elephants are pretty dangerous. I actually think elephants are more, pr probably way more friendly than people think. Most of those animals, like, they have a range, but they, if they decide that they don't like you, they will kill you. Oh, So right. there's only, you know, there's, it's, it's hard to say exactly. I suppose that's true. I suppose that's true. Actually, yesterday before I went to bed, I was talking to Billy Moreno yesterday, and uh, there is a, there's a video online. Uh, there's a gentleman on Oprah who has a pet bear. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't remember the bear's name, but uh, he has a pet bear, and it's like, you know, just like a full-blown, full, full blown, full grown grizzly. And that, you know, he just takes care of whatever. It was the best man in his wedding uh, stuff. It's like, you know, a minute and a half video. I, I would like to have a pet bear, but again, you know, if the pet bear doesn't want to be a pet anymore, you lose the game. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, I got, you know, living with a cat. Cat's totally sweet. Love it. Very affectionate. Occasionally. The cat being a cat will be upset. It'll bite me. Maybe it'll scratch me or something for no real reason. Because that's just kind of what cats do. That's what animals do. The problem when it's a bear and that happens is that the bear kills you. It's not, you don't just get scratched. It's not a play. Well, in theory, you do get scratched. It's just yeah. a lethal one. Yeah. Is it a scratch if your head is no longer there? No, that's a different thing. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. That's a severing. Ah, yes. It will be a mulligan here for Gabriel. We'll see if Festus is able to keep his hand, and he's going to send it back. So, I like that mulligan from Festus. He did have a mountain and a one drop, but there were just too many threes in that hand. There was a couple of Boros Reckoners and Chandra's Phoenix, so he has to draw very well with that hand to, to be able to have a reasonable start. Can't be afraid to mulligan with the red strategies. It's okay. You can take one. I mean, I keep a lot of one landers, but it has to be a one... One lander with upside and easy to realize upside. So if you're on Mountain, Rakdos, Cackler, and a bunch of two mana cards and maybe a shock, that's a great seven hand card to keep because it doesn't take much for your hand to be awesome and you have things to do even if you stumble a little bit. Yeah. That hand with a bunch of Boros Reckoners and Chandra's Phoenixes needs to draw too well and didn't have enough to do if it didn't find its land drops. Yeah, so taking the mulligan there is perfectly acceptable. So both players are going to go down to six here. Gabriel Costa Giomi. I do remember covering some of his matches last time we were here in Dallas a couple months ago when I was joined by Matthias Hunt. And then, of course, Festus, we watched him win that standard open to kick off season three when we were doing our season two invitational coverage. So good to see him back, starting off really well here with Mono Red. And Mono Red seems to be pretty well positioned right now in the metagame. Yes, it does have bad matchups in Mono Blue and Green White, which is getting pretty popular, but the other decks it looks to be pretty good against. And Festus has a little bit more game against those decks than the typical build of Mono Red by playing Boros Reckoner and Fnatic and Mocus. He can survive a long game and steal games out of nowhere also. I think he gives up some percentage points against control decks building it that way, but he's a lot better against other creature decks. Well, both players have kept their six cards. Kosa Giomi will play a Temple of Malady before passing the turn back. Resendis, just a mountain before passing back. So no one drop, but you have to believe he does have some twos. And I think I do see a Burning Tree Emissary and a Firefish Strike over there. Kosa Giomi is going to play a Temple of Silence. That top card will go to the bottom. And back over to Resendis we do go. Resendis does draw a third mountain. Here's a Burning Tree Emissary. There's a Firefish Striker. So a good start, even though no one drop. And Burning Tree Emissary is still one of the most powerful cards in Standard. Can't go into decks easily. It's a it's a big deck building cost, but it is awesome when it is good. Costa Giomi does have a third land to play. You see weighing the options here. It looks like there are not one but two copies of Corsair of Crufix in the hand. Looks like maybe we will play a spell this turn, though that's not the Corsair. Certainly giving it some thought. Corsair is a pretty big liability here if Festus has a haste creature. And there is the Corsair. So the top card will be a Thought Seize before passing the turn back. And there are four copies of Thought Seize in Kosa Giomi's board, which means he brought those in. 
which is a little bit surprising as here's an ash zealot. So this will be a no blocking allowed situation due to battalion firefish striker showing its skill. And then we're going to follow up here with a fire drinker save before passing the turn back. Wow, we. The only way that bring in thought seats makes sense to me is if Gabriel cut every creature that can be hit by searing blood. Well, there are four brain maggots, there are four underworld coin smiths, and, and the four, four idol on the blossoms. blossoms. So that'd be 12 cards to board out. That's a lot. It's not unreasonable. Syrian blood did a lot of, of damage that first game. Yeah. And coin smith and, and brain maggot have pretty low ceilings. It's hard to imagine them being very good in a game. So, yeah, Brain Maggot seems quite poor in this matchup. There's a Corsair number two. This will be a land, so two life is going to be gained. And now Corsair can start to get to work here. Temple of Malady going to come into play. Of course, there's a Sky Trigger on right now, but I don't know if that Nyx Fleece Ram wants to go away. It seems like a good place for that is on top of the deck. Better than the average draw, yeah. it feels like. But it looks like, all right, bottoms up. So we are wrong here. And we'll see what the top card is now. It's copy of Abrupt Decay. That's pretty good, too, since it can take care of the Firefish Striker. wonder if he's just trying to get to Doomweight Giant ASAP. Zendez with a mountain right off the top of the deck. Can he work his way through these two coursers? He is at 16. That's a lot of life. And he knows that the days on that Firefish Striker are numbered. So what do we do here for Festus? Really depends on the hand, but I think he most likely has to attack this turn. Could send him with Fire Drinkers here. You have the ability to pump it twice to take care of a Corsair. But I don't know if that's the best use of his turn or his mana. Yeah, the problem is you do that. And then Gabriel goes, untap. I draw Abrupt Decay, Abrupt Decay, your Fire for Striker. Now I got a 2-4 against your 2-2-2s. Two, two, Where do you go from here? Yeah. So he, he, this attack is not great, but I don't think Festus has a, a different plan. I think it's the attack that you have to make. And so now Corsair is going to get in front of that Firefish Strike, we're going to get an activation here on the Fire Drinker Seder. Festus will take one to deal an additional one. And now we're going to do it again. So it's going to attack for four, five, six, seven, eight damage is going to come across. Yes, Festus will lose his Firefish Striker, but he does get a lot of damage through. But now these Coursers, you know, if Gabriel is able to continue to make his land drops here, uh, Festus is going to be hard pressed to win. But remember, he is playing the list with Fanatic Aboga, so he has a little more reach than these decks typically do. Let's take a look at that top card. It's a copy of Blood Baron of Escopa. That's a pretty good one if you can get into play and start attacking with it. We're going to go down to six, I think. Here's a Thought Seize. It's a risky one to cast. And there are two cards, a Chantra's Phoenix and an Ash Zealot. Taking the Phoenix may seem a little bit backwards, but it might be the better of the two cards. Simply because you do have two four toughness creatures in play that can block anything on the ground. Yeah. I mean, if, if Festus draws a shock, it's a, it's a disaster, yep. but, it, you know. In the worst case scenario, I guess he still has his Abrupt Decay to keep it on lockdown. Again, you are a little surprised as he thought he's in after sideboard. Actually brought in. Costa Giomi does have four copies on the board. So I was a little bit surprised to get revealed to the Courser. Yeah, I have to believe he's just bailed on every two toughest creature. That's the only explanation I have for it, which is not unreasonable. I mean, Searing Blood is pretty dangerous if your creatures are getting tagged by that. Yeah, Sikos and Jeremy was not thrilled about having to take the Phoenix. Now he's going to play another Thought Season to take care of the Ash Zealot. So he's down to four. Now Shock does kill him. Fnatic, uh... Fnatic kills him. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, Fnatic will kill him. Because he gets to attack. There's also, you know, he has an Abrupt Decay at the ready, obviously. Yeah. But, you know, if you Abrupt Decay Ash Zealot, Fnatic can still deal four because two from the Burning Tree Mysterio, one from Fnatic itself, and then one from the Fire Drinker Seder. So that would be Lights Out too. So casting both of those thought seasons was a little bit risque, but we'll see if it works out for Kosa Giomi. Looks like maybe the old fire drinker here is going to come into attack here. Might as well trade it with an abrupt trade for an abrupt decay or one of the coursers. Yep. Rosendez certainly giving it a lot of thought. Now, if he did draw a card for the turn, we don't know what it is. Neither do you. The only person that knows is our standard open champion from earlier this year. He's like he's going to cast it. And it's a copy of Burning Tree Emissary. It's not a shabby draw here. He gets to add to his board while presenting the same dilemma to Gabriel. Lose a Courser or lose your Abrupt Decay. It looks like everybody's coming in. How now do this, like, I don't like this attack very much at all. No, this is, this is Festus loses everything now. Yeah, because he knows there's Abrupt Decay. I think you're supposed to hang tight. 
Uh, I, I'm fine with saying just the fire fist striker. Me too. Or no, the the, the fire drinker. Oh, sorry, yeah, yeah the yeah. fire drinker said it right. Yeah, I'm Excuse fine with me. that too. But he loses his entire board and and shuts off his out of winning the game with uh with fanatic. Yeah, that's a very confusing attack. Blood Baron is the draw. Take a look at the top card here. It's not a land. It's a coin smith too. So he hasn't gotten away from. He hasn't done a full searing blood swap. Yeah, I imagine some of the more expensive cards came out like Elspeth and Distinguish All Hope. Underworld Connection, so that's six. Yeah, that's six. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty perplexed. I don't know how he made space. Here's three mana. There's a Vanishing Light. And now an attack with a Courser. But Shock is still good. Shock is, oh, no, wow, no way. Rakdos Cackler, okay. <laughs> I was like, wow, Shock is, Shock is insane. The coin Smith, the draw. Top cards, the Temple of Plenty. And now this one's probably out of reach. Yeah, that, that's the push yeah. right there. Gets to gain some life. Scry set a Blood Baron next turn. Gets to coin Smith. There's another coin Smith on top of the deck. Yeah, this is where it gets ugly. There was a small window there, but now because of the Coinsmith trigger, that's going to gain a life. And, of course, the Temple of Plenty coming to play, two triggers in the course. And now we're up to seven. There isn't one draw that gets the job done. And now he's probably comfortable attacking with maybe both, but going to play a little bit more conservative and attack with just one. Yeah, I don't mind that because if you attack with both and Festus draws Searing Blood, you lose your guy, take a bunch of damage, the Phoenix comes back to hand. You can you can imagine losing the game if that, if that draw happens, so... Better to err on the side of caution. Top card is a forest. That's going to come directly into play. Two courser triggers are going to put Kosa Geomi up to nine. Top card is another land, so we've got him going up to probably 11 next turn. Blood Baron with Scopa will be deployed. And now, yeah, I'm okay attacking with both of these creatures because I know that you can't block. And actually, let's do it this way, perhaps. I think he's actually safe to attack with all three, truthfully. Uh, he has to worry about... He doesn't even have to worry about a threat and effect. He doesn't have to worry about Harness by Force yeah. at this point either, so. But playing conservatively here isn't going to hurt him, I don't think. No, it's not. You know, there are times where if you play too conservative, you could end up losing the game because of it, but there isn't a card that Festus can have to punish Kosa Jomi playing conservatively because his life total is only going up. Temple Guard is going to come to play off the top of the deck. Kosa Jomi is going to go to 11. Top card now is a Brain Maggot, which, again, I didn't know if we were going to see that. So how he made room for these Thoughtseize and other things will be very interesting to see. Here's another Coinsmith. That's going to come in. There will be some triggers. And, of course, Blood Baron is going to come into the red zone. So Festus did a nice job in the early turn of the game to get Kosa Jomi down in life, but was not able to finish. Yeah, there was that There was that Alpha Strike that, that collapsed Festus's board, and now... Not even Burning Tree Atmosphere, or excuse me, uh, Fnatic and Mogus can pull him out of this. Yep, and Festus says, let's get the dies off of these Rakdos Cacklers, and let's try to play a third game. So Gabriel Kosa Giomi does win game number two. He evens it up here as Green Black Constellation and Mono Red Aggro are headed to a third one. And Gabriel's mana base seems like if anything is going to doom him in this matchup, it's going to be this. He's done a lot of play nothing on turn one, play nothing on turn two. And on the draw, those kind of hands aren't going to be acceptable. And he has kept in a lot of Searing Blood targets as well. So Festus can get some really powerful openings back by Searing Blood that Gabriel will be hard-pressed to keep up with. On the other side of it, he does have cards like Dix Release Ram, which are, will be excellent for this kind of game. Slows down Festus' initial rush and is not something that's easy for him to, to searing blood off the table. Now, one thing to note here, and this is something I really like to do when we're watching this, is to see if these players go back to the drawing board uh, for re-sideboarding, which it looks like Resendus has done and Kosa Giomi has not done. So that means that he's happy with his configuration of, you know, Thought Seize and Brain Maggot and the cards that he's left in his deck. He's very happy with how he set his deck up. Now... Gabriel, uh, sorry, Festus's deck rather is a little more susceptible to Thoughtseize than the average mono red aggro list because he is going all the way up the curve. So you can you get more draws of I take your one early creature now your draw is too slow, or I take off your take your one payoff card and now you're kind of underpowered. But that being said, Gabriel has so much good action in his 75 cards that it's hard for me to believe that that Thoughtseize is a worthy include. Now Festus isn't the only person that had a lot of success with red when we were at our Season 2 Invitational in Columbus. Tom Ross did as well. He's qualified for our Players' Championship, and there you do see him. He did win the Season 2 Invitational playing boss Sly, as we do know. And Chris Van Meter, well, he did it by grinding his little heart away. 
during season two? Well, he had a lot of good finishes. I mean, a lot of top eights and top fours. Yeah. Didn't, didn't win a trophy, which I know was something he really wanted, but still had a very good season. And that combined with season one and his efforts in the, the back half of 2013 locked up season two. We can't, we can't forget about our season one players that are qualified for our player championship as well. Derek Sheets winning a, a great five game set in the finals of our season one invitational in Charlotte. And of course, Brian Braun to win, climbing the leaderboard in season one to qualify. I'm really getting excited about this getting firmed up. Yeah, you know, we've known, we knew kind of for a while that VBD was almost certainly getting the season one point invite. And CVM, there wasn't a lot of drama in season two. But season three is is a race. It's a real race between Joe and Alex with with Ross and Gerard, a couple other players right in the mix. That Invitational in Jersey is going to be awesome. And then we're going to have the last leg where we're really going to be locking in nine invites on points, season four and the eight at-large bits at the end of the year. So it's going to really heat up post-New Jersey. Our players aren't locked in, but our prizes are. First place, $20,000. Second, $8,000. Third and fourth, they'll get four k Fifth through eighth, they'll get two grand. Ninth through twelfth, a thousand. And thirteenth through sixteenth, five hundred dollars. That player championship, December twentieth and the twenty-first, Roanoke, Virginia. You, me, Matthias, I'll be covering it. It's going to be an absolute blast. Again, we've got four players qualified. We need twelve more. Also, keep in mind that airfare and accommodations are taken care of as well. So, if you win the season four invitational in Seattle and you're worried about the flight at the last minute, don't even worry about yeah, it. Don't we got be. that covered. Game three is where we are here between Resendez and Costa Giome. Both players take a look at their opening hands. I think they're just making a decision if they want to keep. They are both happy, happy. It's just a mountain and a passing of the turn. So no turn one play again here for Resendez, but you can see he's got an absolute lined up for turn two. Also as a shock, just in case, Costa Giome is going to take four. Four to cast the thoughts he's against the red deck. Okay. Well then, here's a shock ya. Put you down to 14 before I start my second turn. And now we're gonna see the hand. There's a Reckoner, there's an Emissary, there is a Chandra's Phoenix, and there's an Asselin. Me oh my. I don't think I would have thrown away that shock. I think you keep it, keep it for a little bit, especially with Phoenix in your hand. Here's the thing. I don't think there's any world where he's going to take the shot with the Thoughtseize. So I don't think there's a reason to cast it. And also, you, you know, you can work yourself into situations where your opponent plays a Courser, they block a two-power creature, and then you finish it off with the shock. Or, you know, Gabriel has Underworld Coinsmith, and now it's a huge hassle to get off the table. Yeah. It's, it's gaining life along the way. Well, a timely Rakdos Cackler was the draw there for Zendis. So his Burning Tremissary was able to open up into something else here. Yeah, G Gabriel's taking kind of a weird approach to this matchup. I mean, he's looking now at, at Temple Garden plus Brain Maggot. I don't think you can, you can do that. Yeah, Brain Maggot can't even block. Yeah. Well, I guess it could. Well, it can block once. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you get one block out of it. I guess in theory, it could block. And, and it's, it's a strange approach to this matchup because I don't think, I don't feel like Gabriel has to get lucky to win these games between Corsair and Nyx Fleece Ram, Doomwake Giant, Blood Baron, removal spells. He's got a lot of good action for, for Mono Red. And he's down to 12. He's going to play the Ram, it looks like. He might be considering playing Brain Maggot, but I don't think Brain Maggot can be an option here. Yeah, yeah he's got to, you got to batten down the, the hatches here yeah. a little bit, hold the fourth down. Is there a third land? What a timely peel there for Resendez. The question, of course, now is do you deploy the Reckoner or do you deploy the Phoenix? He's going to go to the skies, and we're going to come to the red zone here. An attack for six. Four damage is going to come across. Coach is going to go down to eight. And as long as he does remember the trigger, the Ram will put him up to nine. I would have preferred to play the Reckoner that turn. It's a little bit better. Uh, you know, you get your haste creature the following turn, uh, and, it, you know, Gabriel's shown a discard spell, so you'd rather have Reckoner in play and have your Phoenix get thought seized than the other way around. Underworld Coinsmith will come in, and there is a Temple of Plenty. So Costa Gioma is going to go up to 10, take a look at the top card here, decide how he does want to pro progress. A real, a real decision we made here. You see, consulting the hand, going back and forth. This card will stay on top, so he's happy with what he's found, we think. Scrying is always difficult, but he will leave it on top. So, Resendez. We'll draw a card. We know about the last card in his hand is the Boros Reckoner. He drew a copy of Burning Tree Emissary. This is kind of what you meant, too. If he were, if he played Reckoner last turn, one, it would be attacking this turn, but two, he'd be able to play Burning Tree Emissary into Chandra's Phoenix and attack. Yeah, Burning Tree Emissary is another small consideration. I still would have preferred the Reckoner even even if 
Burning Tremissary is not in the deck, mm -hmm. but this is certainly a little awkward that it's gotten to this point. Because against this kind of deck, you have to get everything into play as fast as you can. You can't afford to have these hiccups where you're playing Burning Tremissary on turn number five, for example. Yeah. It's just much worse then. I I'm curious to see how much that, that, you know, that sequencing is going to matter in the scheme of things, but Gabriel's doing so much of gaining a life here, gaining a life there, that these little points matter a ton. Doing a pretty decent job of turtling up. Two damage is going to come across. Emissary is going to trade with the Coinsmith. And of course, Cackler's just going to run straight into the Ram. Now your follow-up play is the Reckoner. Now pass the turn back. Ram is going to push Kosa Geomi up to nine. Kosa Geomi is going to draw that card that he kept on top. It looks like it was a Temple of Malady. So he's going to play that. Take a look at the top card. And that one's going to go to the bottom very quickly. So not what he was looking for. There is a Banishing Light over there in Kosa Geomi's hand. And that would be, no, it's not a bad time to cast that to take care of the Reckoner. Probably the Phoenix. Okay, that's fine, too. Gabriel's pretty good at blocking the, on the ground and turtling up there, but he doesn't have a lot of ways to stop Flyers. Rosendan's going to draw a card. He's going to attack with both of his creatures. Can't afford to draw lands right now. Reckoner will be blocked by the Ram. Two damage will come across. Kosa Jomi's going to go down to seven. Follow-up play. It looks like it's going to be that Emissary. We knew about that one. And how about a Mizium Orders as well? That's not so bad. Yep, he's out from under the ram. Yep. And his board's pretty good against Doomwake Giant. I mean, he can just send a Reckoner in along those other creatures. Kosa Giomi going to play another Temple. It's a Temple of Plenty. As beautiful as his mana base is and all the colors it can provide, there's definitely a cost there. Here's Nylea's Disciple. That's going to gain two life. So Kosa Giomi's going to go back up to nine. A total he's been sitting at for some time now. Rosendez will draw a card. How does he want to attack is the question. Does he want to go with everybody? It looks like the answers are resounding yes. So it's time to block a two toughness creature and a two power creature in Burning Tramissary. Five damage is going to come across. Ghost of Geomi is going to go down to four. The follow-up feels like just the land to me. Well, Whatever it is, it's casting it. Yeah. If you can cast it, he's casting it. If yeah, if you can play it, chances are you're probably going to play it. If it's a land, you can hold it. There are cards that he can draw that he can't play, which is Fnatic. But yeah, he's just going to play his land and pass the turn back. So, Kosa Jomi's going to untap it for life. He draws a card for the turn. Still needs to clean up this Reckoner, though. I mean, that's a creature that can keep, keep attacking. And there is a Coinsmith. Going to gain a little bit of life, up to five. Going to pass a turn back. Brain Maggot and X in his hand. Not sure what X is. If he wasn't willing to attack, pro uh, play the Brain Maggot there, probably, I would imagine, something that can kill the Reckoner. There's a Striker. And just happy to pass a turn back. A little surprised to see that. I mean, I would at least send in the Boros Reckoner. It seems like a, 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 fa like a, a completely safe attack because you can give it first strike. What's the worst that could happen? If he has an Abrupt Decay, it doesn't change anything that you're going to do. Yeah. It looks like there is an abrupt again to take care of the Reckoner, sure. And draw a card. Will Kosa Giomi. We know he's got a Brain Maggot in hand. And while that one's not great, it does gain a life due to the Coinsmith. So Kosa Giomi's going to go up to six, a little bit higher. And he, I mean, he can sort of, you know, shield up a little bit for the time being and start using the Coinsmith to deal damage to Festus. And now there's a Sylvan Carry added. So now it's time to either go to the skies or find a little bit of reach here. Yep. But this is a pretty good setup. I mean, he's got the ground pretty well covered at this stage. In fact, he can send in the Nylea's Disciple the way the board's set up. Hey, you, you do want to turn the corner when you can. Yeah. That much is for sure. Don't want to wait all day against the deck with Fnatic and Chandra's Phoenix and removal spells and so forth. I think that would have been a spot where it was safe to send in Nylea's Disciple. In the previous game, I think it was okay to play conservative because he had such an overwhelming advantage, but this one, a little bit more risky because you can get peeled out of this game. You're only at six. You, yes, you do have a way to gain life there in the Coinsmith, but it's not like Corsair or Blood Baron. Now here comes the Disciple. So three damage is going to come across. Rosetta is going to go down to 17. The follow-up spell there is another copy of Sylvan Carry added. So Festus will draw. So one mana. What do we have here? It's a Rakdos Cackler. Going to unleash that. Is it time to attack? Yeah, I don't think it is either, so just going to pass the turn back. Time to draw a card. Kosa Giomi.
trying to outdraw his opponent right now, hoping Festus doesn't run his way into a Chandra's Phoenix or a Fnatic. Or even Searing Blood. I mean, yep. you know, Gabriel's kind of barely holding on here. Resendez just draws and passes the turn back after a little bit of thinking. Kosa Giomi draws his card. Kosa Giomi's draws in this situation are better than his opponents, I believe. Yeah, I mean, Doomweight Giant, Corsair Crucifix, every enchantment's pretty good. Huh. There's a mountain off the top. Just going to pass the turn back. Kosa Giomi did scry last turn. Able to control his draw step a little bit there. We can't forget about Blood Baron Viscopa as well as a card that can be drawn. Golgari Charm. Yep. A lot of good ones. Gabriel giving this turn a lot of thought. You know, playing a land here, probably not, you know, this is a situation where you actually you want to hold lands because you can cast most of your spells, and if you do draw a Courser, you actually want to put a land into play after the Courser so yep. that you can get a life because every life point matters at this point. It's tough because you have Eidolon in the deck and you want to be able to, you know, draw and cast something potentially, but... If Eidolon's in his deck after sideboard, we don't know. Yeah, it could have been cut. Rosendez just draws his card. He's going reaching for mana now. What has he found? I mean, this is a spot where if he finds a removal spell for the Coinsmith, he could attack Firefist Striker the Nylea's Disciple. And blocking is not easy for Gabriel in that spot. Mm -hmm. No attacks that turn, though. So Sajomi's going to play a Temple of Plenty. It's time to scry. Top card's going to go to the bottom. And I think he's just looking at lands in his hand. Maybe not. See, oh, wow. Whoa. A Mortars and an Ash Salt. OK. That's, good. That's a good thought, Seas. Yeah, I mean, he may he may have sensed that overloaded mortars was on the way. Yeah. It's a risky but good thought, Seas. I, I think those are, it might be two cups of Ash Salt was the draw. Oh, this might be a Phoenix in the air. If it it's is. Phoenix, I think this is just lethal. And now there's an Ash Salt, So two. six uncontested against five, minus one for five restricker is four, six minus four is two, times two is four. That's lethal if Gabriel is nothing. So you make the Firefish Striker unable to block, let's say, the Nylea's Disciple. Disciple. Sure. Four blockers on four creatures on the ground. They're Phoenix, all two power. Yeah, yeah, Phoenix always gets through, and then one creature gets through. So if Festus Resendez goes for it... And Gabriel has nothing. But it's still a pretty safe attack, because you get the Firefish Striker, the Nylea's Disciple, and it's not like Gabriel gets to eat any of your creatures in combat. They're all trades, or it's Sylvan Carried it in front of something. So just set them all in and see what happens. Yeah. Uh, you got to remember that Battalion Trigger. Yeah, and it says, you can't block. You do not have a rule spell, and I win. Festus Resendez, with a deep breath, able to get out of that one, defeating Gabriel Casagiomi. Two games to one, and Mono Red Aggro moves on to 3-0. Yeah, and that that opening, that Thoughtseize opening, I think, was what doomed Gabriel in that matchup. Yeah. That's another